Okay, let's get started. Um, uh, this is the last topic of this year, and uh, actually, uh, thank you uh, so much for all of you to, for staying late to join my talk. And um, being the last topic, actually, it's not bad because uh, many studies show that people tend to, you know, our brain tend to remember what came first and what came last. So um, I would hope you enjoy it. Okay, uh, my name is Bin, and uh, Bin Zhu, my first name is uh, Bin, and uh, it is easy to rem uh, memorize because uh, Microsoft Search Engine has the same name as me. <laughs> I don't know why they use this name. And uh, uh, I have been working for Intel uh, for 12 years, and now I'm part of Android security team. And um, today, again, my topic is about uh, 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 Android security uh, storage and uh, how to virtualize it in uh, one of a uh, project which is based on the motive uh, hypervisor. And we have a lot of contributors for this because this is a, a complicated project. And actually, one of one of guys actually, to, uh, Thomas Winkler, is, can you? <laughs> yeah, I think. Can, can you raise your hand or stand up? Yeah. Okay. He he actually is um, uh, expert for the the, the RPMB. I, I, I will talk about later about what is RPMB. He's the the MMC RPMB expert. He, uh, I believe he's the first one to uh, try to upstream um, RPMB kernel driver to uh, mainline Linux kernel. So. Uh, Going to skip this. So this is our agenda today, and uh, first of all, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the, the the problem statement and, the, and explain why we need to build a secure storage for Android. And then I'm going to talk uh, more some more details on uh, RPMB. RPMB is a re replay protected memory block, and this is the fundamental. Um, uh, knowledge to understand uh, how to build a secure storage in the Android system. And uh, then I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about, about, about the, the secure storage architecture and how, uh, what it does it look like. And after that, I'm quickly go through the, the, the secure storage virtualization in uh, one of our hypervisor projects for automotive product. And finally, uh, I came to conclusions. Okay, so so, uh, the, the reason we need secure storage is actually is all about data uh, security and privacy. So we have a couple of uh, examples here to uh, to explain why we need that. Because first, for example, first one is screen unlock. So everybody has a phone, right? If you uh, if you forget the password, you 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 may try it again and again. But probably after you five times retry, you will you may need to wait uh, maybe ten minutes. For example, then after 10 minutes, you can try re retry your password again. Then it, 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 if it fails, then the system may need to uh, ask you wait for one hour or even much longer. So, so actually, the, the implementation behind this is, is because that the, the, the time delay policy is depends on the, the, uh, the time failure counter. So, so we need secure storage to save that counter, which means that if, if someone can change that counter, then they can keep continue to try the, the, the password until a correct password is, is found, right? So this is one of the uh, requirements for uh, screen unlock. And there are some others which, is not, uh, uh, which, which all uh, look um, pretty straightforward. For example, we, uh, we, we, we need secure storage and, uh, to save the system image version so that the, uh, we can uh, disallow attacker to downgrade the system image to an older vulnerable version, right? So uh, the other use is like uh, we, we need secure storage to save the, the factory provision in the key box, like uh, for usage, the, the, the content protection, you, you need the, the, those key box to decrypt the content key to, so that you can um, uh, play back your, your movie, something like that. And uh, also for attestation, um, private keys, and um, and for the device has a fingerprint, you, you need a secure storage to save your, your your fingerprint image data, which is called a template. 
this is not only about, uh, uh, about uh, security, it's also about privacy because typically the, the, your fingerprint and template data may be used to uniquely identify a person, right? So, so this is just a couple of reasons. Um, and then since uh, uh, if, you, if you are working for Android development, you will know that Android uh, CDD, CDD is a uh, compatibility um, definition document. So if you want to get uh, the, um, the GMS or get your, your, your Android phone to be certified by Google, you need to pass the minimum requirement defined by this document. And since from Android Marshmallow, this feature is introduced. So from now, the, 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 the uh, from Android Law P, uh, O or P, this feature actually is uh, actually is mandated. So let's uh, take a look uh, take a look at, like uh, more details about uh, the, the the RPMB, this is a replay protected memory block. So uh, basically, uh, let's take uh, EMMC as an example. So uh, if you have an EMMC, there is a, a small partition which um, uh, which is called RPMB. And it's a special partition, and this size you cannot increase or, or decrease this size as long as this uh, uh, MMC device vendor manufacture, manufacture this device. So typically, it's, it is uh, maybe only two megabyte or four megabyte. It is pretty small, but uh, but according to the specification, it can be uh, it could be a 128 kilobyte to from to uh, 60 kilobyte. But typically, actually in our um, uh, many reference board. Uh, reference uh, platform is only four megabyte, so it is it is pretty pretty small. And uh, uh, actually, in this picture, you, um, there's only one RPMB partition. But uh, in the latest uh, specification, like UFS 3.0 or uh, NVMe based uh, uh, flash storage, it can support a multiple RPMB partition. So um, I will talk about that later. Uh, a bit later on this. So let's give you a more details on this this partition. Um, unlike uh, other ordinary partitions, reliable access partition must have must need, uh, require the, the the authentication key. And basically, uh, if the key is not programmed to this device, any access will will will, will fail because the error code indicates that the, the key is not programmed. You cannot access. You cannot read, you cannot write. But as long as you, uh, you off, uh, as long as you program this key into the device in a factory, in a safe, in a, in a safe uh, environment, and this key cannot be changed anymore, it cannot be reprogrammed. It can, it, it's invisible to any software because the, the hardware doesn't provide any interface to allow you to change this key or reprogram this key or extract this key. So. So basically, this key. So basically, after the key, the, the, the program, then you can, if you have the key, then you can use that key to, to write the data. I will talk about uh, uh, a detailed example for write uh, operation. But for read, actually, it, it, it is um, even you don't have this key, you can still read the data. But the problem is that you have no way to. Verify whether this data it's it's uh, it's modified it's uh, uh, it's, re uh, it's a replayed data anyway. So this also means that if you have a secret data a key something like that you must not directly save those data in this partition because so you you must have to uh, encrypt it uh, and that encryption is responsible by fast software so software need to uh, encrypt data before sending the data to, to to this partition. And uh, apparently, it can provide a, a replay protection. And for write access, the, the, uh, this uh, uh, hardware provides built-in monotonic counter, which is used to, to detect uh, the data replay protection. And for read access, because, software, because for in, in read operation, software is responsible for verifying the, the, the data to ensure the, uh, to check the data freshness. So the, 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 the uh, the, uh, the, so software is re responsible for generating random, random number to you, uh, which is used to pretend uh, provide a replay protection. And, uh, and now basically I'm, I'm giving you an example how it works for authenticated write access and how the replay protection is applied in, in, on this partition. So, so 
this this uh, uh, suppose that this this block the, the left side is a uh, uh, MMC hardware and it ha uh, has a RPMB uh, data error which is the save the data sent by a software and it has a um, a built-in HMAC engine, which is used to calculate data uh, MAC value, MAC is message authentication code, and it, it has a built-in uh, uh, fields re OTP register. OTP is one-time programmed register. This this register is used to um, for software to program the key in the manufacturer, as, as I just talked about uh, before. And this key can only be programmed once, and um, after program, there's no way to to, to to, uh, to, get, to, to get it from software. And it also has a built-in Montana counter. This counter can only be increased by the controller, by the hardware, uh, followed by the, uh, access, each successful RPMB write access. And you cannot uh, decrease this counter, you cannot change this counter, you cannot, I mean, you cannot reset the counter even after power, uh, uh, after a power cycle. So, so now we have a software. So, the right side represented software, software who, who may want, who, um, that may want, uh, uh, want to write uh, some arbitrary data to this partition. Then we, we need to get the authentication key, right? So uh, in, in the implementation, actually, we can get, uh, we can derive this authentication key from some uh, trusted uh, uh, hardware or firmware or something like that. And uh, basically, here we assume that this software can uh, already get this key. And this key is the same uh, key with the uh, um, uh, with the key in the hardware that is previously provi uh, provisioned in the hardware. And then you have the counter. This counter is, uh, um, actually is, uh, is the, the counter is readable, so you can uh, re just read this counter from the hardware because this counter is uh, actually it's not a secret. And then you have um, you need a, a, a software HMAC engine. Then if you want to write the data, then you need to prepare the data and prepare the metadata like uh, um, the data size and uh, the, 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 the block address which, which the data will be sent to. And then you, you, you can uh, concatenate uh, this data with the counter and then use the syndication key to calculate the, the MAC value. We can call this MAC message syndication code as a signature, right? And then we send a whole bunch of data to the, the hardware, then the hardware will, will Extract this data and, and, uh, and the counter and and it recalculate the, the the signature, which is the MAC value, and then we compare this state, this MAC. If, if this if this uh, calculated MAC is matched with the MAC value sent from software, then it means that the software may have the key, right? And then also need to compare the right counter to make sure the counter sent from uh, software is exactly the same counter which is really uh, from building internal counter. If the counter is, ma is matched, then it means that the data ref uh, is, refre is fresh. So then after, after these two, uh, two values are matched, then the data can be read to this partition. So this is the la actually this is last stop. Uh, this is last stop. The last stop is uh, after the, uh, the, the data is successfully right to this error, the counter here will be automatically increased by one, which, which uses that for the next write, you cannot use the previous data to replay attack. For example, you, you replay the previous data, uh, you re record the previous data and send the data again, then the counter obviously, uh, uh, obviously will mismatch. So, so basically, this is how uh, the R RPMB works, uh, which is defined by the, the specification for for this uh, for MMC, uh, UFS, and uh, uh, MME device. So next, I'm going to talk about the um, uh, the, the software uh, full stack. I mean, how to build this uh, the, the the software stack for for the to enable this RPMB. A partition and to build a secure storage solution. So um, basically, we uh, we uh, um, actually in in, uh, in these two days, uh, many people uh, talk about how to um, uh, protect Linux, how to uh, secure Linux. But uh, but here I'm assuming that the the Linux Android system is compromised. So we need to build a, a, a TE secure environment, which is on the right side. So actually, uh, if this is an ARM system, you know that the ARM trust can build, can support the two 
uh, world, which is the secure world and non-secure world. And in, uh, in x86 platform, we use a virtualization technology to, provide, uh, to isolate the, 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 the TE environment. And uh, if you look at, actually this is not something new. If you look at uh, um, Windows, since Windows 10, Windows has a built-in virtualization-based uh, security, which is called VBS, which uses exactly the same architecture. So here we, we just use the virtualization to isolate the world, but actually all the device, um, especially for the storage device, they, they, uh, the Android uh, Linux kernel owns the, all the native drivers. We don't virtualize the storage here. We just use the virtualization to, uh, to isolate the world. And, um, it, and you can see that in this block, the uh, uh, trusted T provide them enough service. In the, the, there is a couple of, uh, uh, there are a couple of TAs here. TA is a trusted application, and but actually I'm not talking about all of them here. I, I just only focused on the secure storage TA, which can provide the, uh, as previously mentioned, we have a, a syndication key, right? We need, uh, we, we use this secure storage to manage that syndication key, and uh, also we need to provide encryption to make sure the, the data confidentiality. So so this is uh, what a secure storage um, uh, architecture looks like. And um, at the right side, this is a secure storage t, uh, TA, and uh, it, uh, it can uh, derive the, the RPMB syndication key, uh, and also can get the uh, secure storage encryption master key after each reboot. And, and this, uh, this two key must be protected in the TE solution so that Android cannot uh, have this key. So even if Android is compromised, the, the, the data which is saved in the RPM, in the RPMB cannot be, cannot be uh, decrypted or cannot be stolen. And uh, we have a, a, a very, uh, actually Google implemented this uh, uh, file system, uh, a secure file system in this secure storage TA. And uh, we, we um, uh, uh, if we want to save the data, we, we, we use the encryption key to encrypt the data and we use a syndication key to sign the data, then the send, over the data, send the data over the, the IPC uh, communication channel to, uh, to our proxy in, in Android. And this proxy then can talk, with, um, talk to RPMB uh, over the uh, RPM partition over the RPMB driver here. Um, the reason is that the, the uh, actually the MMC device is, is a single head device, which means that these two OS cannot talk uh, the, the single device simultaneously. So we need a proxy here to send the data. Up. Uh, and um, anyway, we, we assume that this path is is is, uh, is untrust path. But anyway, because we uh, we have uh, we can keep the storage encryption key and the syndication key be secured. So. So we can make sure the data uh, can be protected. And as, as you can see that we, we also have uh, um, extra uh, uh, data flow which send the data to a Linux, ordinary Linux system. I will explain why uh, uh, this later. And basically uh, this secure storage uh, can provide two uh, different uh, service to the TE uh, environment system. And one, the first one is a temper uh, we call TP, and it, which is a, a temper-proof secure storage. As you can see in this picture, um, the, all the data uh, after encryption, and, and, uh, I mean, including uh, uh, both data and uh, file system metadata, and they both send uh, send to eventually send to RPMB partition. So we we do this uh, because of two good reasons. The uh, first one is we can um, provide much higher level uh, secure protection because. Uh, um, because if attacker doesn't have the key, then they cannot uh, temper this data, right? So this is what we call temper-proof or temper-resistant. Uh, so the, the, the another reason is that this, um, uh, the data saved in the RBMB can survive uh, from uh, a factor reset. Now this is uh, pretty good for the usage, like uh, uh, if you have the, some key materials and you need to provision into in factory, then this R RPMB, this service is, uh, is the best for you, right? And, but we have the, the, the problem here is that the size constriction, uh, 
constraint because typically it's only uh, two, uh, four megabytes. It's very small. But uh, most of the cases, if, if, if you only use this for key materials uh, um, as a key material storage, then it should be fine because uh, um, think about uh, uh, the, the TPM, actually TPM uh, just only have uh, uh, maybe seven, seven or seven kilobyte. It's, very, it's pretty, pretty small than this. And the, so to solve this size uh, constraint problem, we uh, uh, provide another service, which is called temper detection secure storage. And as, as, as you see that, this, uh, the we split the, the, the data and the metadata, and we send the data to the ordinary data uh, partition in Android as, uh, uh, as, a, as a main storage, right? And, but we send the, the file system metadata in the RPMB. So in this case, we, uh, we can support a large amount of data, right? And uh, this is very useful, like uh, in, it can be used to save your, your fingerprint uh, uh, template data, because if you re uh, uh, do factory reset, then the, all the data will be gone. That's fine, right? And uh, however, we, we, pr we also provide, uh, um, and actually the, the, the building file system provides the capability to detect the, uh, the data uh, for example, if the data is altered, if data is replayed, then we can detect the, the data is changed. So this is what we call temper detection, or sometimes we call temper evidence secure storage. So, um, so we have already talked about the, the, the we call the native environment, and but now we, uh, uh, I'm going to talk about the, the secure storage virtualization on our. Uh, one of project which is called Acorn. Acorn is uh, actually it's, it's the name of a uh, seed of this uh, oak tree. Uh, anyway, and uh, this is the uh, open source project. It's a uh, lightweight uh, hypervisor which is built for IoT and automotive usage, uh, uh, automotive industry. And you can uh, actually it's, it's the Linux Foundation project. You can uh, take a look at the details of uh, this is the official website. You can. That up now. And, but here, I'm, I just only um, uh, have a quick view of the, the architecture looks like. This is one of the usages. There, uh, there are some other usages like uh, for real mode, for IoT industry, for real mode guest support, uh, RTOS support. But here, we are using for automotive. And in the in a vehicle, actually, we may have multiple systems, like for um, uh, the front seat, uh, you, may, you, will, you probably have an infotainment system, the back, uh, the back seat, uh, rear seat, you have an uh, entertainment system. So we can use this hypervisor to build a multiple and your uh, uh, guest VM to save the cost because we can use a single SOC to support a multiple OS. And here, the, and, and in this case, we, uh, we, we have a, a service OS run on the, on the left. And this is a privileged OS. It's a, uh, it, it's a closed system. It can provide the, the, the it has, does has most of native drivers, including um, the RPMB driver, including the, the EMMC or UFF secure, uh, the storage driver, and can provide uh, device mediation or device emulation for the, the all the guest VM, because all the guest VM take a, a storage as an example, the guest will see the virtual uh, storage. And um, it can also provide a, a guest a user, uh, we call it as a user VM, UVM, a UOS. It can provide a UOS management. And since we, um, since we need to support Android here, and so we, we build a, a similar a trust execution environment in this, uh, 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 on top of this hypervisor. And we actually, uh, 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 in this architecture, we, 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 uh, we further reduce the NAV code, this network net hypervisor, by uh, introducing a new concept which we call a one word, two, uh, sorry, one VM, two word. And which basically means that in the hypervisor, we only create one single VM data structure, we, but we create two different virtual CPU uh, uh, context error in order for. Uh, for save and restore uh, each word virtual CPU state. And just like a traditional um, uh, process or thread uh, context switch in the operating system, we call this the word context switch. Because the, the trust ENT uh, 
sorry, the, the, the trusty in the secure or uh, secure world and the Android, they are, they, they are actually is time sharing on the same uh, physical processor. So we can switch the speech back and forth between them by uh, save and restore the virtual CPU state. So, so let's talk about how, uh, how the uh, secure storage uh, is virtualized on top of this uh, system. Then um, you can, sorry, um, you can see that we have, uh, um, we have a hypervisor, we have a, a native driver which is inside the, the service of the kernel, and we have a, a, a EMMC device, but assuming that this device has only one single RPMP partition, right? So uh, during the boot time, we, um, uh, the, the, we send the authentication key, RPMC authentication from firmware to hypervisor, and hypervisor was sent to the, the service of the kernel, so that the services can uh, access the physical RPMB because services like, can have this key, right? However, for the virtual machines like uh, Android VM on the right side, they they all don't have the the, the directed physical uh, RPMB driver, or physical uh, MMC driver to access. So we we need to build um, a virtual RPMB module in the, in the uh, in this device model uh, process. The device model process, you can imagine that this is something like uh, the QMU. We don't use the QMU because uh, the, the QMU is too, too uh, complicated, to, right? and it's not a nice and uh, uh, friendly for commercial use. Because someone, many other motive uh, vendors uh, uh, doesn't want to uh, uh, disclose their source code. And so uh, we, we, in this virtual, t uh, uh, virtual RPMB module, uh, when this module started, we uh, generate a, a virtual RPMB key, and we, we, we hand over this key security to um, the trusty world. So that from trusty perspective, from trusty's perspective, it, it doesn't care whether this is, the, this, uh, this is a virtual key or this is a physical key. Physical key. They, it just use use this key as the the the, the RPMB authentication key to talk with the the backend RPMB uh, emulation module. The emulation module exactly behave as the the the, hard, the behavior of the hardware uh, RPMB contro controller. So so as, as long as secure, uh, the trusty world get the authentication key, then they can it can send the data over the proxy, and then because there is no physical RPMB driver, so uh, we need to write a, a, a front-end RPMB driver and talk with the back-end uh, RPMB, uh, back RPMB service over the virtual I.O. framework, and then send the data to, to the virtual RPMB module. Then the virtual RPMB module uses the virtual key to verify the data, and then extract data, then send it to kernel. And the kernel will use the physical RPMB to sign the data and send the data to to eventually to physical RPMB. So we, we can build the whole flow like this. And by the way, if, if there is a multiple Android start, we use a different virt virtual key here. For example, this is the virtual key one, the another one may be a virtual key two. And this key can, uh, the, the, I mean, this key can, uh, they are different, and uh, each VM cannot, each user VM cannot see the, the other VM uh, virtual key. And we have different process isolation so that the, the different process in the service also cannot see all the virtual key here. So this is basically RPMB uh, virtualization works in this uh, hypervisor project in which we can support multiple Android and provide a temporary system secure strategy for those multiple uh, Android uh, as a guest OS. Wait, but, but but still we have a problem here. Is, um, as as we previously mentioned, we, we the secure storage not only provide the the data authenticity, uh, uh, data integrity, and also provide confidentiality. So so we we also need a, a secure storage encryption key here to encrypt the data before sending the data over the proxy to to service us, right? So I will talk about how to generate this secure storage key in this system. Okay. So this is, the, this is how it works. And the, 
the, the trans, actually, the, the, there is a platform seed, which is the, we call the uh, P seed. This is unique to, uh, per, per each platform. This key is bound to hardware in UK. And the firmware, uh, the trans firmware generates this key and sends this key to hypervisor. And then, the, then when the, whenever there is guest VM user also start, then the, the hypervisor will derive this key. And over this UUID, the UUID is the user OS unified ID, and this ID is fixed as long as it's created. And we, we derive this, uh, uh, we derive a user, sorry, a VM seed for this specific VM. And then we use this, this, uh, this VM seed to derive the secure storage encryption key for this trusty. So if there is another VM start, we, use, we will use the platform seed in the hypervisor to derive another different uh, VM seed. And then that VM seed can be used to derive a, a different secure storage master key here. So, so in this case, we, uh, we, um, we can isolate the data because even the services can have the knowledge of the physical RPMB driver. Uh, how, Physical RPMB key, they it cannot know the the data, the playtext data, which is encrypted by different user VM, right? Because the the service doesn't know the the, the platform seed because hypervisor never sends the the seed to the, the platform seed to service or us. So this uh, how it works to make sure the data. Um, uh, confidentiality protection in, in this, uh, on top of this virtualization uh, system. So let's quickly uh, come to conclusions and uh, some f future considerations, and uh, especially for improvement. And now we, 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 we know that we can provide temporary system and uh, temporary evidence secure storage in, in native Android and in this uh, virtualized environment, which can support multiple Android VM. And we also uh, can provide uh, data integrity and confidentiality protection. And, but for replay protection, we can achieve that, uh, obviously, for native Android, but we have problem for virtual Android in, in, on, on top of that Acon hypervisor. Because um, although and SOS is implemented in a closed system, SOS has no knowledge of secure data encryption key for each virtual Android VM, but SOS does has actually RPMB key. It means that the SOS, if it's compromised, it can record the data and then replay. It. So the, in this case, the, the virtual, the, uh, virtual uh, Android guest doesn't know that, right? So, so this is the one of um, uh, uh, enhancement in the future of what we need to do that. And, uh, and by the way, the entire solution depends on the, 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 the verify board, the, the chain of trust, because we start firmware, and the firmware start uh, hypervisor, and hypervisor uh, start service source, then service source to create a device module, like QMU, to create uh, uh, each multiple, uh, each Android OS. So we need a trust chain to build in this, in this flow. And uh, the, for the future consideration, the first one is um, um, actually, as, we, as I previously mentioned, the native uh, uh, EM, uh, EM, EMMC, I, think, I don't think EMMC will support multiple RPMB, but UFS, uh, since from 3.0, uh, now has already supported uh, maximum four RPM partitions, which means that that four partitions can program with four different authentication keys. So if we take this um, into consideration for build virtualization on the hypervisor, for example, we can assign each virtual Android with a dedicated physical RPMB. Then in that case, we can prove an RPMB uh, replay attack, as, as I just previously mentioned. And we also uh, have uh, to do the, the, the enhancement for the service or the integrity protection, like that. Okay, so this is all. Thank you. All right. Questions? Uh, this isn't actually a question here, but could we have a round of applause for Elena, who's been doing such a wonderful job doing the MC?
you. Now back to your regular questions. It was a bit out of my order. So do we have a question? Do we have questions for the speaker? Um, sorry for the ignorance. I'm not familiar with, uh, with the hypervisor, but um, what kind of trusted execution environment we're talking about here? Because is this like a vendor independent or this is TXT or some other Intel new stuff? Oh, this, uh, te technically this is not something new. It's uh, just based on the virtualization technology. So it uses uh, uh, VTX, which is supported by CPU, and also use uh, VTD, which is also uh, we call IOMMU, provided by chipset. So this uh, currently we don't use some new technologies like SGX or some other undisclosed technology, because we, this is built for the multi product, and, and we build based on. Autumn based processor because on, those, on that processor, there are many advanced technology. Uh, actually, they are not available yet in that hardware. Okay, but uh, but the hypervisor targeting Intel platforms. Mm -hmm. Hypervisor hypervisor only targeting Intel platforms. Sorry, uh, what, what in that sentence? Hypervisor. I'm just targeting Intel. Oh, tar targeting Intel architecture. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks, Tom. More questions? Okay, let's then thank the speaker. Thank you. Have a good weekend.